Everything you need to maximize your crypto journey is here at PDAX Prime. With PDAX Prime, you'll have direct access to the crypto market, allowing you to trade over 50 tokens, including exclusive OTC coins, faster and at competitive rates. PDAX Prime also has a dedicated team of experts who are passionate about crypto and other solutions to help you make the most out of your crypto journey. Plus, as a PDAX Prime client, you'll have early access to our wide array of crypto learning sessions so you can stay ahead of the curve. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Join PDAX Prime today. Bringing the future of finance closer to every Filipino. This is PDAX. Welcome to Philippine Digital Asset Exchange, where you can trade your crypto for as low as 200 pesos on the web exchange or through our mobile app for more convenience. Register and create your PDAX account with us today. Hello! Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat, mga PDAX customers, and of course, partner Jed, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Okay naman. Very busy lang tayo over the weekend kasi of course, it's a, oh, oh, again, and a very action-packed episode for today, no? Mm-hmm. I'd like to check to... Alam mo ba, Jed, nakahapon was the global Bitcoin Pizza Day. Where yeah, yeah. The first one <laughs> bought... 10, ano ba? Magkano ba yun? Uh, a 10,000 10, Bitcoin, Bitcoin for box of two pizza, pizzas. No? A oh two? A two? <laughs> Parang 300 uh, million US dollars si ginasas niya in today's money. But of course, uh, we might find it funny today, but syempre, uh, these uh, seemingly crazy and stupid things are really important for us to understand the use cases in crypto. And... Without further ado, again, welcome everyone. Welcome to Fresh Money, the Philippines' number one crypto show. No, and of course, my name is Ed, and I'm Jed. Welcome to Fresh Money. Yeah, and now, so I hope you guys read our disclaimers earlier because we don't want to keep repeating it every time. So, as always, we always want to hear your thoughts and. So feel free to ask questions, comment, and share this Facebook Live for a chance to win 300 pesos worth of crypto. So for those people who are, would ask the most insightful and thought-provoking questions, we'll get rewarded mm. with this prize. Oh, nga. Uh, of course, yung may, medyo may hirap naman kami ni Jed ng konti sa mga questions ninyo, no? So uh, I think uh, that also helps us expand our crypto knowledge and also kay, yung mga viewers natin today. Um, you will be rewarded by, of course, cryptocurrency, not pizza. So, comment naman dyan sa ating mga regulars, no? What do you think? Will you feel kung nakabili ka ng pizza for 10,000 bitcoins 12 years ago? You know? ano, ano kaya? Kung ako medyo masasad ako ng konti, Jen. But I think if I was, yeah, if I was in the market during that time, malamang may bitcoin pa rin ako ngayon. So, baka hindi ako masyadong sad, di ba? All right. So, that being said, let's now go on to the state of the market, Jed. Ano nangyari sa market? Well, in recent weeks, it was a pretty rough time for the crypto market, no? In actuality, we had eight straight weeks of downtrend in Bitcoin. So that never happened before. 
And it this the reason Oops, partner parang medyo nag-break out ka ng konti. You you broke up a bit. Oh, okay. I think it's my know. internet. So, no is my audio clear now? Okay na, okay na. Go. All right. Pare. So, so yeah. miss namin. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Bitcoin was that never happened before until right now. So that's a very interesting perspective since in the current environment we're in right now, we're in their slow economic growth and high inflation rates with the Fed also tightening monetary conditions, basically interest rates. So this isn't a favorable environment for cryptocurrencies in general, no? So, which is why we're seeing Bitcoin downtrend recently in the past two months. And But the past few days, we see that Bitcoin's playing quite better and the 30K level. So it's mm-hmm. consolidating around that level. You may see um, an accumulation phase and hopes for a relief rally given that Bitcoin has been quite oversold recently. So I think we can mm-hmm. expect some green candles coming soon. But we expect uh, a new trend wherein we'll make all-time highs. This could be a dead cat bounce. So it's best to practice risk management and exercise caution. That's right, Jen. So of course, just for everyone's information, hindi lang po sa crypto nangyayari itong mga ganito. Again, it's a global route. Basta lahat ng risk assets, whether stocks man yan or yung mga iba-ibang mga derivatives na medyo quite risky or if you're in- investing, for instance, in metals that are related to finan- to uh, economic output. Yung yung tawag natin, industrial metals are also under uh, you know, some some level of correction. So again, uh, this is not new to everyone. Ang, I think what is really new, Jed, no, yung nabanggit mo kaninang uh, pagtaas ng rates of uh, the Fed. No, Again, it's unprecedented. Pati inflation levels, Jed, at 8.5%. Parang nag-inflate. Parang mas, mas mababa pa inflation natin sa inflation nila. So I think that's also what what led the Fed to really aggressively uh, pursue that co- that. Co- contractionary monetary policy of increasing the rates. So I think yung charts ni, ni Jed, ito, makita natin for ETH, no? very similar din. I think we're lo- now looking at the support levels nung first nag, uh, parang nag-launch into a rally early 2021. So we're in our, we're, we are now at that phase. As mentioned by Jed, that's also same for Ethereum. So parang mm-hmm. masyadong mabilis yung pagbaba last week. Nag hit ng oversold levels yung Ethereum and now the market is just trying to, you know, uh, hold itself together. They're trying to narrow that gap between the 50-day exponential moving average. Alam mo parang may lastigo yan jed. Eh. Pag medyo na pabanat ng konte, it kind of kind of holds it at that level. But ako I won't be too confident about this base that the market seems to be holding. So again, uh, there is reason to believe, again, not financial advice, guys, in the first, you know, uh, we are not giving you financial advice. Everything we, we say here should be, uh, of course, accompanied by good research. But again, in my experience, yung mga gantong downtrends, minsan nag lang ng konting breather yung market before it returns to its downtrend. And watch out for the following support levels. As mentioned, intraday nung nagsimula yung rally na yun, na-hit na yung Sinasabi nating um, uh, eight, uh, yun yung na hit na yung seven, one, one, seven, eleven, one, one thousand seven hundred eleven US dollars per, e- per either. So na hit niyan intraday. So as the days go by, yan ang titing na natin because I think maraming nakabili dyan. And then if that breaks, then again, we are now looking at the one thousand two hundred ninety two level. So I never thought, Jed. That we will be saying this in the show, because parang I, I I already kind of felt very positive about yung yung parang seemingly sideways pattern ng Ethereum, uh, the past uh, four months. No, I was really crossing right, my yeah. fingers. In fact, I was even trying my hand to participate already, but it seems that you know inflation had a better plan. So again, watch out. And again, during these times of um, m- Market corrections, pag the drawdown yung market, always exercise the risk management disciplines na lagi namin pinag-uusapan ni partner Jed in this show. I think what's very important in the in risk assets or the crypto market is that you stay invested. So make sure that number mm-hmm. one, you only put money that you are not going to use. No? Yan may mga tumatawag sa amin in my past life na pag-tuition daw ng anak niya or pambili ng bahay, naipit sa stocks, then 
to now. So dapat this is that you have to be able to invest money that you are not going to uh, expect to need in the next five years, three to five years for that. No, you all you have to always think about diversification as well. So again, crypto is part of your risk assets. Dapat meron kang iba dyan. Of course, if you're talking about yung two major projects that, that we talk about, yung Bitcoin, Ethereum, yan medyo most likely they're, they're very big uh, projects. They have a lot of capitalization behind them. And to Jed, na, na share lang sa akin kahapon in one of the pizza events <laughs> yesterday. Now, if you take a look at the top 10 um Top 10 cryptocurrencies in 2014 and today. Na ibang iba na, right? Ang natira lang, mm. Bitcoin and Ethereum. And Ethereum. Ether. So again, ay, yung sabi natin sa mga basic seminars natin, no, na yun ang parang most likely magsistay in the market is true. So yun, uh, again, you have to, you know, have, uh, have a long-term view on these things. You have to diversify, right-size your investment. Wag naman one-time, big-time, especially if you're catching that low, and then last but not the least on risk management. Ano, uh, ano ba ba yung mga hindi ko nasabi dyan? Always do your research, especially if you That's are right. yun, you're trying to time this market, you're trying to catch that low. That's next to impossible, guys. Ako, I don't, hindi na ako nangangarap na ma-catch pa yung low. Ang pinapangarap ko lang is to participate when the trends are very, very strong. All right, so ito yung pinaka-excited ako, Jed, is the word for the day. Ano ba yung word for the day natin for our viewers? So the word for the day is pump and dump. So I yeah. think you guys are pretty familiar with this term, but for those who aren't, pump and dump is basically um, when there's um, exaggerated statements or misleading information that boosts the price of a particular security, asset class, or coin, and and then when other participants try to follow this pump or this trend, this really rapid change in uh, price movement, they will get bumped on by other people. So I actually had a personal experience with this, Ed, no? Yeah, man. Uh, my friends and I participated uh, with in this in the pump for XRP. So saying that uh, XRP will pump by 9, 9 p.m. So we'll try to... to, try to so, so we participated in that, but we only put a very small amount because we knew it was yep. a scam based on how people were talking about it. I remember there was we went, there was a telegram call, pa, like people were chatting. Yeah. Some were already having their doubts. And there was this, like figurehead speaking. Uh, it was all going to be okay. That the price would keep going up. But once the 9 p.m. hit, price started crashing by like 30%. In a matter <laughs> oh, my minutes. God. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. I'd like to highlight to everyone yung yung sabi dyan sa stocks. It's the same, Jed. No? When you are mm. buying cryptocurrency, no? Kunyari, you want to participate in a particular crypto because you like the crypto, you like the prospects. Remember, in the other side of the transaction, someone is selling to you with the opposite view. That's what makes really this market or investing in stocks or in crypto really tricky. Kasi nga, it's the opposing view. Diba? May isang yeah, nagbebenta, right. may isang bibili. So, again, hindi yan parang binibili mo off the shelf. You're buying from someone who's actually selling it to you. So, that's very important to take note. And that being said, mahirap din yung nakikinig sa mga guru. Diba, Jed? I think in the stock market, ang dami ganyan. Diba? May mga YouTube, YouTube pa, no? But, <laughs> problema doon, syempre, uh, it's very prone because uh, prone to these types of behavior kasi may, malamang mayroon din silang hawak. And I've worked in the stock market industry for the past five years in my past life, Jed. And yan, hindi nagkulang sa mga taong mahilig mag-pump, mahilig mag-hype, mahilig mag-encourage ng mga tao to really put money in a particular stock. Then eventually, idadump lang din nila sa yeah. Idadump din nila. <laughs> So, ang, ang often na sinasabi dyan na yung greater fool theory, no? <laughs> yung greater fool who will get, with who will be left with holding the bag, no? So, ito, I think may maritime question dito from Chris Torres, no? Ipakita lang natin dyan kasi very important to determine. How do you know if it's pump and dump? Nako yan, medyo mahirap. I, I think for me, quite difficult to see. But you have to understand what assets are prone to this. 
and mainly yung mga maliliit lang na capitalization the smaller stocks the smaller coins are very prone to pump and dump so that's why in kunyari mag invest ka stock or in crypto we want you to consider also yung malalaki because pag malalaki yan there's enough liquidity there's enough people watching it na mahirap i-pump and dump ang uh, sa akin diyan Jed ang first indication ko sino ang nagha-hype sinong nagpa-pump Sige, nag-isabi siya to buy. Yan, pag sobrang okay, pag tinanong mo siya, bakit mo sinasabi? At sabi niya, nako, I heard from this source and this source and that source or I feel this time or yung mga ibang silly things pa, meron akong mga baraha or something, tarot cards. I <laughs> <laughs> no, that this is the one. Malamang hindi. No? Again, you can you can participate naman. Minsan naman it comes through but make sure that you right size. Don't put everything there. Huwag mong it, itataya lahat. What are your thoughts, partner? Yeah, just to add to that, no, I think if the if all they talk about is price in crypto, it's most likely a pump and dump. It's, all, it's always price that they're talking about. It's always price that they're promoting. It's most likely that they're just doing it for speculative purposes. So it's, that's already a flag. So you want to see projects that are more on fundamentally strong to be on the safer side, like they have an upcoming... Um, development, upcoming thing in the roadmap, something's happening in the horizon. So that's much better and something that you need to verify as well because other people can make some false claims and they're saying, oh, there's going to be this big thing coming from this particular coin. But yeah, verify those sources as well. So it's very important to do your research, to really yes. look into your sources. Tama. Yan yung tama talaga. Nako, nag-cut na yata si Jed. But yung sinasabi ni Jed, guys, do your own research. Huwag magpadala sa mga nang, nang ha-hype o mga nagsasabi siya to buy this because it's gonna make you rich quickly. Yan, medyo dapat patitense ka na dyan. Ito pa, Jed, one of the few comments ang ating mga regulars dito, si Christian Caburian saying, no, just notice, sir, but ang bilis mo ba pero pag tumaas ang tagal. Yan is human nature, Christian. no We are designed to fear the the possibility of loss rather than the potential of gain. We are really you know, skewed towards uh, being afraid more of risk. So that means that pag may uh, uh, parang threat to our wealth or to our welfare, we quickly pull out. Ganun talaga yun. And then, ang hirap ulit mag-trust, ang hirap mag-build ulit ng mga ganyang market. So generally, kahit sa stock market and any risk asset, mabilis bumaba, pero napakatagal or medyo may grind towards the top. What are your thoughts, Jed? Very interesting yeah, to see Christian. In talaga, times, no? Yeah, I think it's in this current market now. We're in the downtown because of Christian. Eh? So it's like um, this blew up and that more recently. But there are times in the market when we call this the bull market or in the parabolic mm. of the crypto market. Price could really go up super fast and would even have this correction that you're waiting for to have a good entry. No? So there will be a time where and will come. I don't know if it's anytime soon. It might take a while because of the current market situation and all the things happening in crypto and around the world. So, but there's a time, no, ang bilis tumaas na some coin could even go 50% in a day. Yes. Two consecutive days. Tama. So, this current sentiment is in the market right now. So, right now, we're more on a downtrend. That's why it feels like mas ang bilis bumaba. Correct. And of course, uh, just just to add to what uh, Jed has mentioned, ano, uh, yung, ako lang yung observation ko, having traded a lot of risk assets in my life, Christian, talagang mas mabilis na nas pag sa crypto. I think Jed, you will agree. I don't know if you agree with me, but yung know, corrections and you know, rallies in bull or bear markets, sober and bilis, mas mabilis than, the, than, than kunyara you're trading in the stock market. Okay. So, yon. All right. So, that's the word for the day. Pump and dump. Make sure that you are protected. Do your own research. Pag nag-pump, ito pa. Sorry, may pa pala akong share dyan, no? Kasi mayroon kanina nag-share, ano, how do you know pump and dump? Mayroon tinatawag kasi na momentum investing, no? So, ito, it's, it's, it's really an art in 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 uh, stock trading. Na normally, of course, ang target niyan yung mga small cap, Jed. Yung mga kaya talaga umangat ng sobrang bilis. Kumbaga, you don't yeah. do momentum trades for large caps. So, may, may tao talaga nang gusto yung ganung maliliit. So, wa, yung natutunan natin dyan is that when it does pump, tumaas, pataas, wag mong sasaluhin pag tumataas. You wait for it to pause. 
And that pause will normally tell you kung may backing yung rally na yan. At normally kung wala, it just falls back down straight. Pag may backing yan, then it kind of, you know, treads slowly sideways na maliit bago tumitira pa taas. But the key there is that when it pauses, you have to be able to establish yung risk mo in that particular trade. So, what does that mean? Kailangan mag-establish ng kahit sandali lang na support para alam mo lang when you're gonna cut, when you are wrong. Right? But generally, kung tama ka, you put money, tas nag-pump, you sell half, and then you let your profits run. So, normally, yun lang yung momentum trading. Again, once again, if we have already yung mga charting functions natin in our PDAX app, we will be talking more about those strategies, partner. So, sana lang in the next couple of months, we can already have access to that uh, to those uh, trading discussions kapag meron tayong charting in place. Okay? Very so let's now go on to the next portion of our show, yung Crypto News Weekly. So si partner Jed will be talking about those uh, no, uh, yung mga news articles, which I think are very important and very critical in understanding the crypto industry. Then we'll just do a quick take on them. All right, partner? All right. So here's our set of news. But before I explain each set of news, I just want to apologize my internet has been a bit choppy lately because of the weather in my place and the internet's kind of slow. But okay lang yan, partner. <laughs> Show must go on. Lang. Show moves. <laughs> yeah, so, go ahead. For first news, I think this is a very interesting news. No? I like, saw this some... I just saw... Um, it basically um, shows how NFTs can be used in a different way. Because we're very used in how NFTs are like art or they're just profile pictures. But in here, we see that NFTs in China are used to counter censorship during the pandemic. No. So we're basically leveraging the uh, immutability of the blockchain by preserving all the social media posts, the audio files, in order to bypass the censorship that's happening around China. Because if you guys aren't familiar, China has a censorship and we want to push this particular narrative or propaganda in order to save their face from any sort of criticism from their um country fellow countrymen that's why they um hide certain news and certain angles to particular issues and that's why people in the people people in china are using blockchain technology by preserving all these important information and preserving them as NFTs. So I think this is really interesting because this particular use case has never occurred to me or I've never seen it applied or mentioned anywhere else. So Ed, what's your take on this? Sa akin, ano mo, time and again, uh, Jed, no, si uh, crypto has proven to be a good backstop for rights. And I'm not surprised it's being used in China also. So similar to most communist states, especially mga states that really control their media, it's uh, very important for us to access a balanced view on certain things. So I'm very, really glad that, you know, uh, NFTs are also performing that way in one of the most secluded countries in terms of media. Yeah. So... Uh, of course, pag nalaman niya the Communist Party, they also try to snuff that out. But I think in terms of NFT and the technology behind it, they can try, but I don't think they can. So, again, very interesting to see, Jed, yung mga developments in how we live our lives. Again, yun na siya sabi ko, every time I get a chance to speak, Jed, this is technology that has the potential to change the way we live. And hindi lang yan. Kahit sa ibang bansa, sa ibang aspects, we don't know. But right now, we're seeing yung manifestations of that. Yeah, it's a very interesting and promising use case. That's why in relation to this, Abe, the developers of Abe released the Lens Protocol on Polygon. So this is a software stack that enables developers to create a decentralized social media platform in order to address the problems of stuff such as censorship, um, use and also give back ownership to those content creators because there are times in social media when people will get banned for no particular reason and will lose access to all the things that they spent their blood, sweat, and tears for to create content for the community of that particular platform. But for them to just become rejected and blocked off because of some dubious um, speculations, <laughs> I think it's very unfair. And it also prevents the idea of 
address the issue of algorithm biases because you can target with um, the algorithm in different social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter, wherein they would present you um, particular content that are suited for you that would allow you to stay engaged. Now, the problem with this, it creates some sort of echo chamber wherein you wouldn't hear any particular counter viewpoint and would skew you in a particular point of view. So this would prevent you from seeing information that may be um, valuable to you that will help um, understand things better from a different perspective. As there are times when governments would use the algorithm in order to push a particular narrative if they think that this news isn't credible enough or this information is misinformation. But for they to say that this particular source of information is not true, then there could be some conflicts of interest. Maybe they're just protecting their um, protecting any issues or protecting some problems, but just to prevent you from seeing what's really true. So I think that's what the central like, social media platforms are really trying to address. Yeah, that's right. No, I think in in recent time, major nag uh, catch an attention to Twitter for being in the may talks on uh, e- Elon Musk actually wanting mm-hmm. to take over Twitter. No, again, manaming allegations in Twitter that they are just forcing a particular narrative, mainly yung con- yung liberal narrative in their social media platform. So you ibang mga influencers in that particular social media, if they try to express any conservative or libertarian thoughts. Medyo sinisensor siya ni, no? ni, ni yeah, Twitter. So this is again another manifestation, Jed, of uh, the you know, impact to our lives of this technology and now even in social media. No? So mm-hmm. I think uh, mm-hmm. that is, of course, sabi nga ni uh, Uncle Ben, pare, no? great power comes great responsibility. Ito na naman, no? <laughs> How we are encountering this uh, situation once this uh, protocol really, uh, you know, flourishes and we're now on Aave, the Lens Protocol, we're all there, then, of course, we are free to express ourselves, express our political opinions, but also let's be mindful also of what we're trying to express. So, you know, you have to have that responsibility. True freedom comes from that. So, again, very, very excited about this one. No? Oh, I'm so ready to stop Facebook from selling my data anymore and True. start owning it by myself and starting owning my own content, no? Yeah, so to that, no? the problem yeah. with uh, like this um, algorithm biases is that it also mm. affects your viewpoint on particular investment. Because I noticed this personally since I use Twitter as like my main source of information about crypto, stay up to date with everything that's happening. And I noticed like if I react to a particular uh, tweet and let's say it's a bullish um, statement on this particular coin, the next tweets I'll see, it's all bullish statements on the particular coin. I wouldn't see anything else that's bearish about it. So I think that's very biased and will skew my perspective on other on um on my particular viewpoint or investment thesis on a particular crypto. That's why it's really important to have this decentralized <laughs> social media, you know, so we have this freedom of thought and the ability to think critically. I think that's very important. We can't just simply follow orders we have to learn to, to dissect what is right and wrong and not just simply follow what's being told to us that's right jed i completely agree i'm so happy that you put put that out you know yung kasi mm-hmm. of course the social media channels are have one job to do guys they're there to keep you in the platform that's plain and yeah, simple <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna hear it over and over again and i think time and again whether elections man yan o kung sino paborito nating artista opinions about robin padilla opinions about many many things nakita mo very parang bifurcated yung mga tao it's polarized kasi nga di ba yung mga ayaw they're fed news na ayaw nila and yung mga gusto are fed news na gusto nila but I think that starts with the users themselves. No, wag tayong magkaroon ng parang mentality na if not if, if you're not with me, you're against me. Eh, exactly, no? yeah. We have to have that discourse. We have to learn how to agree to disagree and mm-hmm. open your mind to other opinions as well. No, pag may sinabi isa, porkit hindi pa boros ay wag mo siyang i-block out. I know historically we have a tendency to do that, but it takes a lot of maturity to again listen. Just listen. Ano yung point nila? Why are they saying this? Why is That's it? Right. And then you open yourself also to learning something new, which I think I love so much. So ako, I really keep that open opinion on a lot of things, Jed. 
and mm-hmm. uh, you know it's really a habit now when you, when you find yourself trying to defend yourself so much try to employ the opposite try to disprove yourself and try to see if that right. concept really holds and diyan mo magagamit yung mga ibang opinions of other people ayan yung next news mo Jed ayan i think i said also kasi to very funny lang Jed no i was uh-huh. asked yesterday in our event eh, yung sa global pizza day uh, there was this one question asking us, uh, what do you think is the next big thing in crypto aside from Bitcoin and ETH? Ang sagot ko, sorry, it crashed two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, tao na tao yung mga tao, sadly. So, yan yata yung next news mo, Jed. Fire away. <laughs> yeah, for those people who are following the, the Luna saga, there's actually a revival plan by Do Kwan himself. So, the plan is to migrate Era to a new chain whereby we don't have the algorithmic stable coin of USD, but it will just have Luna. So it's basically another layer one protocol or another blockchain of the Solana, uh, Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, etc. But what's interesting here is that they will airdrop to those people who were holders of Luna during the attack, the before the attack, and even after the attack. So they'll be airdropping the token to these um, holders in order to give them some compensation for holding through what was a terrible event for not just the Terra community, but of course with the crypto community as a whole. So the this uh, proposal was to preserve the community and talented builders that were created within the Terra ecosystem. Because there's a lot of interesting protocols that were developed in Terra yeah. that were very innovative and not just um, copy and paste from the likes of Ethereum. It's not just a simple the Terra equivalent of Aave or the Terra equivalent of Uniswap. There's actually some innovation. And that's what I find really interesting, what really attracted me to Terra. No? So the way... so. This so to add to that, um, this chain will be primarily community driven, wherein Terraform Labs, the developer of Luna, wouldn't have any, wouldn't receive any airdrop. So it will all be the discourse of the community and see how this chain will move forward. As for the old um Luna chain, it will be renamed to Terra Classic. So I don't know what will happen to that personally. But I think it's very interesting that Luna is migrating to a new, to working to a new chain, being primarily a layer one. Although some have some doubts about it because the edge that Luna or Terra had was this stablecoin. The the power, the narrative of having a centralized stablecoin for a decentralized economy is a very powerful vision, which made a lot of people believe it. And uh, this would, could be the next big thing until the recent crash, no? So I think, so, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting how this develops moving forward. So, Ed, what's your take on this proposal? I will happily wait the airdrop, bro. I think si Luna. Para sa akin, remembrance na lang of a chain that I really like. And gaya na sa mo kanina, very innovative yung ibang mga protocols yan. like yung what I really got attracted to was we yung mirror protocol very nice you can get exposure to traditional assets not just equities ha. may mga funds din sila no? so very interesting use case and I think in, I am barely scratching it ako kasi I have uh, I'm very close to the equities market I, it's, it's, it's also my background so pag may mga ganyan crypto versions I get really excited Again, sana they find a way to really solve this out and not really, you know, waste all those ideas, all those interesting use cases, interesting protocols. The you know na ipinanganak ng 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 uh, Terra network na yan. And ayan na naman yung classic case din Jed, no? I think uh, yung mga lunatics at, at least in in, uh, in 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 the US are very, you know, if you're not with me, you're against me type of people. Yeah. You know? And even in the face of criticism, who which are valid. Ako, Jed, honestly, I started listening to the podcast na prior the crash that talked about Terra and Luna. No? So it, I was really trying to you know, uh, analyze ano yung 
yung mga yung mga thoughts prior to the crash so that we learn from it really well no ayun nga as as i mentioned classic case of if you're not with me you're against me so again lahat po tayo meron tayong mga blind spots so that's our human nature so that's why we are with other people that's why we work with other people that's why i love hosting this with partner jed that's why i like working in pedax is because there are people who really have your back and try to tell you mm-hmm. na may ibang perspective and try to learn. No, It's a very important lesson, I think, for this. And ako, if I were, kunyari, a founder who's building above Terra, I would probably consider just moving it into ERC20 or in Ethereum. Somewhere more stable, no? Uh, especially okay, if right. the concept is really good and really unique na walang counterpart in uh, Ethereum, baka I would try to consider that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what some protocols are doing. No? Yeah. Not all protocols would go to the Luna V2. Some would mm-hmm. migrate to a different chain or others would have their own blockchain. So I think that's very interesting. And we'll see how this develops. But as I said earlier, um, since Luna lost its primary, its edge of being having a native stablecoin, uh, it's interesting to see what will be their unique value proposition in the market now and how can they capture more of the market share of the all these competing layer one networks. Oh, tsaka pati may 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 syempre may konti ng history yan para <laughs> diba? parang mm-hmm. hindi it's not going to be that easy to sell the idea, no. Again, yeah, the trust. I I mean, no one if you know, if I like a certain Terra supporter, I'd probably uh, get in and participate. But now I really have to read the white paper now <laughs> and really take a look at <laughs> what changes they made, no, before I get to participate again. But gaya nga nang sabi ko in all the talks, I'm not naman happy about the loss. I'm sure some people uh, lost a lot in this crash. Mm-hmm. But I would uh, want to see also the the silver lining in all of this, no? That we get to test these things while ganyan palang kaliit. Because I really think that crypto, blockchain, and all these technologies will be bigger in the future. So it's good that we are testing already these use cases as, as early as now, habang konti palang yung maapektuhan. Yo. All right. So on to the next news. But uh, just. I'm just turned off my camera because maybe it would improve my internet. Hopefully, my yes, audio sir. is better. Much better, pare. <laughs> nice. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. So, next news. El Salvador president, the first adopter of Bitcoin as a legal tender, is promoting the use of Bitcoin to other financial representatives of emerging countries. So, this was done during an annual meeting with the Alliance for, of Financial Inclusion and the president will be promoting to different countries such as Paraguay, Ecuador, and Latin America, for the African countries, it's Angola, Uganda, and even some Asian countries like Bangladesh and Pakistan. So he's going to promote the idea of Bitcoin being as a tool for financial inclusion and really promoting the use of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general providing more efficient use cases for their economy. So I think this is going to be really interesting. We may see some news in the future of these countries adopting Bitcoin as well as legal tender. So yeah. what's your take on? Very interesting. I know yung mga smaller countries pa lang nag adapt But ako, mm-hmm. I would really be happy to see one major country do that. Ano? Something really significant, probably part of G7. Let's <laughs> oh, it's legal tender here. But I think what you also have to consider there, Jed, is yung, of course, there are mga l- layer two options to, you could like, like the Lightning Network to really increase yeah. the transaction throughput of Bitcoin. But I think uh, we're still looking for that particular chain that's perfect for, ano, uh, perfect for transactions. Ako, I, I'd rather pin my hopes because I just recently came across yung plans of the, of the Ethereum Foundation. Now, one of these plans is to really expand the number of lanes uh, yung parang, that's how they explained it in the one of the articles I, I read. You know? So instead of having just one lane to entertain all transactions, they're try, trying to open a lot of lanes to you know, cater to a lot of uh, to different types of transactions with the varying security mm-hmm. requirements. Because right? do you need absolute security when you buy like a, a piece of gum in the store? <laughs> as, as, that's true. As, as opposed to you trying to transfer the yung parang 
trying to transfer something to buy your house with. So again, there needs to be some distinction on the level of risk and the level of security for each and every ano, plan. And I'm very hopeful that it does happen. And for Bitcoin, of course, uh, small countries might, you know, might, uh, might uh, adopt it. But sahin, just favorable regulations, Jed, across the board. Just l- l- let let them just be open about it. Ako, I'm happy na. Yeah, I think that's the right step forward no? to at least have favorable regulations. Mm-hmm. But just to add, no, why it's all usually the smaller countries for adopting Bitcoin first or crypto in general is because I think they're adopting it out of necessity. Eh? Because these countries usually have an economy that's not as strong or has even really high inflation, wherein the inflation would be around in the double digits. So they would want to have some sort of inflation hedge or their bank, their local banking system isn't as strong as the likes of the G7 countries or the developed economies like the likes like US and Europe. So they would need something that's more accessible and more convenient for them, like crypto. Because in crypto, you just need a phone and internet access or a laptop, and you can have access to a open monetary network. I think that's why lots of people. That, that and I think that's how crypto really improves financial inclusion. Fantastic. All right. All right. So for our last news, Ethereum <laughs> devs tip the merge will occur in August if everything goes to plan. So yeah. this is a very promising development for Ethereum because it would move Ethereum from a proof of work consensus mechanism to a proof of stake. So this is beneficial for Ethereum because it requires cheaper hardware and runs on uh, less electricity, so it's more environment friendly, and with cheaper, um, with easier, with cheaper, with this cheaper hardware to run a validator node, it would be easier for it would lower the cost of entry and thereby increasing the centralization in the network. So this is very interesting. It would make Ethereum more scalable, but to add to this, the the merges actually the the scalability solution of Ethereum yet. I think the one that really improved the scalability of Ethereum is the what's called sharding. I think as you were talking about yes. earlier, where in sharding. That one, yep. uh, yeah, sharding. That's where and they will um delegate to different chains of, of different kinds of transactions. I think this is the one that would really help Ethereum scale when they can process transactions with thousands per second. Because at its current state, Ethereum's only transacting around 15 transactions per second. That's why it's very slow and they rely on other layer two solutions and uh, layer, yeah, layer two solutions. But with sharding, this would really improve the scalability of Ethereum and allow it to be the go to blockchain. So I think that's a really big catalyst for Ethereum and they aim to implement this upgrade by sometime 2023, assuming that all things go well. Oh, fantastic, pare. Ako, I'm very excited about that shift to, to yun yung, uh, yung, yung merge nila into yun, the new version of Ethereum that's going to use the proof of stake uh, consensus algorithm and all the other ideas that you just mentioned. Though. Very excited about that. And again, not financial advice. No, we see Ethereum being quite weak in the past couple of weeks. And then we see even we have a reason to conclude that it might continue wants the bearishness still continue for all risk assets. So what does that tell you? Uh, for me, not financial advice, but an opportunity for me to participate. <laughs> so really keen on trying to do that. And in fact, in our seminars, Jed, no, I often say to people, kite bear markets, there's still something you can do. Not shorting, guys, uh, but really trying to participate slowly because really no one can really tell when that downturn is going to stop or can it reverse. But as long as you believe in the entire concept, you believe in what Ethereum is trying to do, you believe in what you know crypto stands for in our uh, modern economy, then you can participate, but do cost averaging slowly over time. Because the, the, right. the idea behind this is to stay invested and participate. If you get scared because of that, you mga drops na sobrang lalaki, then you're probably out. No, Best is to do it slowly. Ako, I'm now doing a monthly not again it it's 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 applicable to me because you know that's my personality but i buy every month a small amount no while this is happening right? so i get to participate 
and participate slowly so that in the next uptrend, when if ever this merge even triggers that, I'll be ready with my Ethereum holdings. Ethereum. <laughs> 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 Just yeah. Ethereum. <laughs> all right. I think that's all the time we have for Crypto News Weekly. Now it's time for us to answer the questions from our community. All right. So, kanina manami tayo mga questions na, na na-answer, no? Jed, but ngayon meron pa yata tayong mga ibang questions, no? So, again, yep. I'm trying to ask your questions about crypto and whatever we've talked about this uh, this afternoon. And, of course, the most thought-provoking questions will receive the price of 300 worth in cryptocurrency. So ito, ako na uuna, Jed, sa tanong ni, ni Mr. Riz De Leon. Kailan po kayo magkaroon ng charting tools sa PDAX and futures trading? Salamat po. Again, charting is something that we think that traders need. And so far, I think that the, the charting apps in our web app, uh, uh, parang hindi pa siya sufficient for the trading use case. But uh, I think we're trying to do something about that. Uh, we are not yet at liberty to reveal to you when that will happen, but certainly that's within our radar screen risk. So watch out ka lang. I think pag-uusapan natin sa fresh mind, definitely kung mat- ma- matupad man yan. For futures trading, I don't think it's going to be available in any platform just yet. I think there's really tight regulation on f- on uh, futures trading because that is an investment instrument. So pag investment instrument na pinag-uusapan natin, hindi po yan covered ng yung mga VASPs like us, but it's really covered by the SEC. Kailangan po yan registered. So again, baka medyo hindi pa maging available ng futures trading, but definitely in charting, we are working towards that risk. So antay ka lang. Partner? For our next question, where's that? Here, by Dominic Johan de los Reyes. Is there a possibility there will be an on off relationship status to NFTs since China has a heavy censorship and can impact their, how their social credit system works? Hmm. Yun, I think, ano yan, Jed, kasi parang kung nanood ka ng yung ano to, yung sa Netflix na palabas, no? Yung sa China, there are people whose job it is to ask people about the particular occupants of a community. Now, meron silang tiyatawag na social score. If you're rude to your neighbor, you didn't take out your trash, you didn't follow the rules, then you get the merits. Now, if you help other people, you you know, you know are you're a model citizen in your particular country, then you get merits. And yung score mo overall will be the basis of your availment of so of public services. Mm-hmm. So kunyari, there's one incident dito may isang tao no na he just failed to pay his loan dahil umulan. That's hindi naman niya kasalanan. But because of that, bumaba yung kanyang social score. Now that being said, nung pupunta na siya for no uwi siya sa sa province nila for Chinese New Year, he had to take the bus. Because he couldn't take the train. Because the train requires a certain social score. <laughs> so, very dystopian, Jed. So, I yeah, think, it is. You know, for all the many public services like trains, like maga avail ka ng health benefits, I guess, no? And also the other things that the state provides you. I think but the interest rate ng loans from the state will be controlled based on your social behavior. So, again, eh, Ako, uh, I'm not sure what to think, but ako yung, it, because I live, we live in the free nation. We, I think we are, you know, uh, uh, mostly living in that uh, set of uh, morals. We have yung Judeo-Christian work ethic. We believe in freedom of individuals. So ako, I don't really think highly of that. But let's see if it works. It's going to be a very interesting topic, I think. For, for for the future of the state trying to involve themselves in society and not just economy. No? I'm very much interested. But definitely, of course, if there's an alternative view to many things, the NFT na as used in China will be very valuable because it's your access. No? Uh, hindi ka na lang nakakulong in one particular ideology. So I think uh, it's going to be bad for, 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 for that. Or if, if not, at least negative for them, right? 
they cannot control yeah. them so much because there's an, another view, right? Yeah, I think China would do something about NFTs now since they really want to control their society. And following the logic of them banning crypto, I think it's expected that they may do so with NFTs as well since NFTs is like one way to bypass their censorship and likes of Bitcoin. So one way to bypass their to the, their local financial system. So I think um, NFTs in China would go in a ban or they'll try to ban it. It's like how they try to ban Bitcoin, even though it's quite hard. <laughs> oh, you can't do it really, no. So yeah, yeah. Very interesting to see what the impact is. Mm-hmm. Hayun. So again, let's uh, pick another question. To meron tayong wayo, mam mam. Ah, uh, ato, ato related dun sa answer natin kanina, Jed. No, yung nagtanong about uh, the charts. Sana malagyan din ng chart ang mobile app. Yes, Anthony B. Espiritu, we are trying to find ways. <laughs> We're trying to find a way. <laughs> To make sure that charts are also available in the mobile app, so uh, anti kalang we're are, we're already working on it. So in, for sure, if we have a charting solution already available in our mobile app, we'll definitely talk about it here in Fresh Money. So stay tuned and thank you for joining us. Huh? All right. So next question: Why po pag magsak si Bitcoin magsak din si yeah, I think it's interesting because lots of the people use Bitcoin as like the index of the cryptocurrency market. So think of Bitcoin as like the PSEI of cryptocurrency, while the altcoins are like the individual stocks. That's, that's why when Bitcoin goes down, all of the coins will follow. Since if the index goes down, generally that means the market sentiment is going down. This would affect altcoins also oh i think for larger investors especially in the us i think there are already funds who are trying to consider also to my investors in it, no? and then since they're risk assets they belong in one box if they have uh yung premium kanilang risk appetite they just sell both and then i think we can expect that uh, coupling behavior for in the foreseeable future unless of course that the proposition of eth becomes really different no maging na maging kunya if their plans uh, all goes through no maging maging means of transaction yan even more stable than bitcoin then i think it's the only time we can expect it to behave differently but currently they're just yeah. being invested because they're risk assets yeah that's right ayun so uh Ito, another question. Maraming mga questions about our future. Jed, ano? Ito, maraming tanong. Yung sa charts. Ito, meron din. Well, will the new... Well, when will the new coins be available? So, web. and soon. Mr. Satra. So, we're working on it. So, I hope we can launch that in the next couple of months. But nevertheless, if those are available, then we can we will definitely talk about it in Fresh Money. But, again, I guess the better question, Mr. Satra, is that why... So mobile ka na lang. <laughs> What's up with these mobile guys the web? <laughs> yep. Okay. This question regarded by Jomar Bicar regarding the revival of Terra Luna. Can't it be abandoned like others? Yeah, I think that's definitely a risk with um the revival of Terra Luna. So it may be abandoned if they don't get enough users or enough developers and builders to commit and build it again this ecosystem given that the name Terra and Luna itself has this sort of stigma where people already have lost the trust of for this particular blockchain or network. So that's the risk that people would be taking by developing here or investing in this particular revival of Terra. Oh, that's right. Anything is possible, Jomar. Pero siyempre, sana hindi lang masayang yung mga hard work ng ibang tao trying to create all those protocols. So hopefully they, 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 they pull through and they keep innovating the crypto industry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. So another question from Mr. Brian Lianco. Kailan po babalik sa 2 million yung Bitcoin? Yeah, and very important question yan. No? So yesterday may nagtanong, no? what will we do during, what are, may, may akong fellow speaker doon. I think he's, he's also one of the founders of one of the earlier crypto companies. 
may, may nagtanong sa kanya. Ang tanong sa kanya, Sir, what do we do during the bear market? What do we do during the, these drawdowns in the crypto market? And ang sagot niya, very simple. Uh, please avoid buying high and selling low. No? Very simple, Jed. Pero in, in reality, yeah. of course, time will tell. <laughs> Pwede mong gawin yun. Siyempre, pwede namang maging, di ba, parang Nostradamus prediction yan. If you wait long enough, then it will come true. So parang yun, di ba, it's a bit more. <laughs> Again, this is technology that can change our lives. We really believe in it. We can't tell you when, but definitely, I think, uh, not financial advice, not, of course, my own opinion lang ito, Brian, you know. These tokens will definitely have a higher price in the future given their impact. But, to when i just don't know yeah to talk a bit to that now i think i agree we don't know when bitcoin will come back to 2 million but one thing for sure is that crypto is here to stay and that adoption will just continue to grow as time goes on as adoption grows generally the price of cryptocurrencies would rise so we're still relatively i think i've been saying this that we're like in the 19, late 1990s of the internet, so we're at that very early stage of what cryptocurrency is, and we're just catching the surface of its potential. So I think we just have to be patient, and hopefully countries would be more open to adopting this or regu providing regulatory, regulatory clarity in a fair manner. Right. Fantastic. Ito, another question. I think we can answer this, no? Si Mr. Zandi Zimod. Miss Sandy pala to. So, Miss Sandy, the, sana magdagdag ng transactions sa verified account. I think we just did, no? Jed, I think for the verified account, we've increased your daily limit from 50,000 to 100K. Now, from on your monthly limits mo, 150 to 2 million. And for annual limits, from 500K to 20 million pesos. So, medyo fairly big na po yung verified accounts. Again, if you need some more of those limits, then try to upgrade, Miss Sandy. So for premium, you just need to provide us with proof of address and proof of income. So proof of income can be your BAR 2316 or yung mga ibang like a bank statement that shows us that you have the capacity to trade higher. So yan po, will, will be accepted. And then once accepted, then you can more than double your, your current limits in your premium account. At 250k na daily, 5 million per month, and 50 million per annum. But again, kung kailangan, mong, kailangan niyo pa po ng mas malaki, then mag-upgrade kayo to Prime, where Jed and I are part of the team trying to grow this. So it only takes another, in addition to the two requirements of premium, you can just take yung 10-minute interview with our accounts team, and you will be upgraded to, guess what? Unlimited transactions, Sandy. So make sure that you consider that. Uh, you know, in the future. Yo. That's it for the Yo. questions. All right. Thank you very much, guys. So again, uh, thank you for the, your questions. Very, uh, it's been fun. I, I enjoyed answering your questions. And now let's move on to the next part of our program, Jed. And about next natin? Well, it's more on promotions na lang. <laughs> no. Okay, let's go. So, for our first promotion, double your token. So, if you want to join this promo for a limited time, we're, we are going to double your tokens if you cash in and buy any of the four new tokens, which are Solana, XLM, Sushi, and BNB. So, if you want to know more about the mechanics, check our Facebook page and our community groups. Oh, yeah, the double pa namin yung token ninyo. <laughs> Galing, di ba? <laughs> Next, we also have fresh money. Again, nakita niyo naman that fresh money is already in Spotify. So if you have missed this or you want to share it with your friends, you can do so by sharing our Spotify account. So search niyo lang doon, fresh money in Spotify, and you can find a recorded version of our podcast. And we're also available in TikTok. So if you want to see some snippets of our recent episodes or keep updated in PDAX. So just scan this QR code and follow our TikTok page for a lot of exciting challenges and promotions that we have in store for everyone. That's right. So if you want quick uh, information, before you YouTube, TikTok is the place to go. All right. 
Next, sabi nga natin kay Miss Sandy kanina, we have expanded the limits on your PDAX account. So, if, kanina sabi na natin, pag verified ka, you have 100,000 daily limit, you have 2 million monthly, and 20 million uh, per annum. Pag premium naman, 250K per day, 5 million per month, and 50 million pesos per year. And of course, your prime is unlimited. So if you want to join our communities to scan these respective QR codes for Discord, Facebook, and Telegram, to chat with your fellow Kapidaks, and even maybe catch me and Ed there, just chilling in one of these social media groups if you, want, if you guys <laughs> want to chat. Yeah. All right. Next, we want you to be at the forefront of the crypto opportunity, guys. So if you want to take your crypto life seriously, then we have the solution for you. Introducing PDAX Prime. So si PDAX Prime, again, kanina, you have to just comply with the KYC requirement. Wala mo na kaming ano ngayon, uh, volume requirements or initial deposit required. But generally, for PDAX Prime, you'll get direct access to the crypto market. If you want to trade with our trader directly through a chat app of your preference, then you can do that. No, uh, chat ka lang. How much is Bitcoin? How much is Ethereum? Then our traders will get back to you, and then you can transact also with them. We also uh, have guidance on your crypto journey, so you can access uh, me and Jed, of course, and the rest of our team through Prime at Pidax.ph. You have any questions about crypto? You want to explore other use cases? Or oh, Sir Ed. Paano ba ako mag, mag ng steady income for crypto? We'll be happy to answer you through that email. And finally, you also have access to yung mga learning opportunities in crypto. Just last week, we had another we had a session called yung Hitchhiker's Guide to the Metaverse by our very own Mr. Patrick Lau. So, yun. Uh, again, una na invite yung prime customers. And also, uh, goes without saying, Yun nga, yung ating exploring the world of di digital assets also available on a monthly basis. So I think late uh, June, Marin Time is Ulit Run. You can also have, uh, you know, early access to these seminars. So pag prime ka, you'll be invited automatically. And of course, uh, uh, ako pa yata ito, meron pa tayo isa pa. Ay, tapos na to, Jeda. Are we, I, I, sige, so... Uh, we will be emailing you guys, especially for Prime, no, your recorded version of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Metaverse. So if you're interested, no, uh, make sure that you reach out to us or you become a Prime customer. Para, para ka mga advanced copy of that recorded version. Again, very, very interesting. Uh, see Mr. Pat Lau shared with us a framework on how to engage NFT projects. So very interesting. No? While the collective market, it's good to build and learn about the many ways you can interact with crypto. All right. And of course, that's the end of our show for, for this afternoon. Thank you very much, Partner Jed. Thank you very much to everyone. Yeah, thank you. But before we end the show, we just want to reward Oi! those people who asked the thought-provoking questions. We almost forgot, Ed. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, my God, I forgot. So, guys, okay, so, so, so our let's... first winner, T. Chris Torres for asking what's how do you know if it's pump and dump? So it gets the uh, Facebook Live and send a message for official Facebook page Facebook page in order to avail of your 300 pesos worth of crypto. That's right. Congratulations, uh, Chris. No, kubang isang question natin. Ito, I think gusto kong i reward to ating sa nating kasama. To, madami na na uh, heart na. Panalunan sa atin to si Mr. Christian. Dot the friend ko na nga to, pare. So again, congratulations to Christian Caburinian. Tinanong niya kanina, bakit ang bilis bumaba? Pero ang tagal tumaas. Again, it depends on the market. Kung bear yan, uh, mas mabilis bumaba. No, pag, 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 pag bull, mas mabilis tumaas. But generally, because of human nature. Congratulations, Christian. Again, like Chris, just uh, screenshot this. And please connect with our official Facebook page, yung may blue check mark yan. You think last but not the least, Jed, who is our last winner? Dominic Johan de los Reyes. Very interesting yeah. question regarding NFTs and China. So let's take a screenshot of this webinar and send it to our Facebook page in order to claim your prize. Yeah, thank you very much, Dominic Johan de los Reyes. So screenshot lang tayo. 
Okay. Yan na, pwede tayo magtapos. Jed, maraming salamat sa iyong lahat. Thank you for watching the Philippines' number one crypto show. Once again, I'm Ed. And I'm Jed. Thank you for watching Fresh, Fresh Money. Money. <laughs> <laughs>